Merry Christmas from the Court of Public Opinion, where you be the judge. We're going to be reviewing the case regarding Majestic Ape and images from Instagram and Reddit. You'll want to stay tuned for that here at the Court of Public Opinion, where you will be the judge. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, where you can be the judge. You may have been able to review some of the images, and I don't have to keep continuing to show the images, but I wanted you to take a moment while we were on this recess break for people to digest what's going on. I know we've heard a lot of different um, 
opinions about this already. We've seen video. We've had people overly investigate the same topic and then find more stuff. So we're just going to try to keep it really simple. Because of the images of the little girl in the tape, is, that's the video and image that is in question because we're going to go down a few different directions with this. One, in a restaurant owner who as stated in the interview with Megan Kelly, I'll put all the links and information below so you can double check and snap, um, fact check it. Um, it's, of course, I don't want to make light of fact checking, but honestly, I've, I've listened to some of Snopes fact checking and I'll be honest with you. I wasn't born yesterday. Okay. And I want to talk about a few other things on that here in a moment. If I get time to let's talk about this case. Okay. We're presented with some information here that has been made public through the WikiLeaks. Let's get to the um, just a timeline of events in early October, right before the election. The Podesta emails was leaked to the public through WikiLeaks. Now, there's a lot of questions on who leaked what. That's not what we're getting to. We're getting to where the information got from the Podesta emails and how it arrived to the point it is. Um, many people online and different website channels like 4chan and reddit started reading through these emails because of course being this such a highly contested election it, it went from that to something totally different and there were discoveries made about language that was used in these emails that really alerted people um of course the sixth sense took them a few other directions before you know it the bigger story that and how Megan Kelly ended up interviewing James Elefantis is that that story blew up and some guy came in there with a gun he was going to shoot him. When all the time, most people have been spending their time really just trying to get the information and trying to get the information correctly. So most people weren't out and about doing anything other than just looking through emails and reading other people's videos. It caught fire for the obvious reasons because of the nature of this story. We're not going to go into that direction, but we are going to talk in particularly about the little girl in this image, which Megan Kelly and James Elefantis, which that was the whole reason that James Elefantis came in and Megan Kelly interviewed him. We were hoping that Megan Kelly might shed some light on this by asking him some real important questions. Of course, going into an interview like that, I'm sure it wasn't really going to touch a surface, but what was really stunning is that Megan Kelly was sympathetic. And the whole point to this is that well, that's her decision to do that, and that's a media, and that's an editorial decision. Uh, no one was protecting the little girl, asking the questions about her safety, and asking what happened, why would they would tape her down. And see, James Elefantis told us that that's a good time, and that's called fun. In his book, that's fun. In our book, that's called child abuse. And we're going to define what child abuse is here. And, and if I have to upload those uh, images or anybody, if you... I don't, I don't know anybody that has other additional information go ahead and send it my way I just want to make sure that we want to clarify for James Elefante Fontes what the idea of fun is according to you that's fun but according to most of us who eat ice cream cake and you need your hands free to do that if you're at a pizza party especially you know um, but by the way, I, I'm not interested in having your pizza. Um, but if you're going to have a party, the kids like to play. And usually uh, any restaurant we've ever gone to, and I, I, I don't know, I'm going to call on any managers out there who would like to give us their expert advice on children's parties and a la carte menus. Uh, do you guys tape people down? And uh, the other question, I don't know any kids that can use masking tape that well, much less me, and I'm 46 years old. Okay. Um and some of you all were taping presents uh, over Christmas. Do you Have you ever seen such a well-done tape job? So the question really is to ask why, if you're a family restaurant, family-friendly, as you stated, overly stated, that a family-friendly restaurant would have that kind of masking tape over a little kid. And, and I, I, I want to emphasize family-friendly because... Uh, I know uh, we go to a restaurant here and it's family friendly. They don't tape their kids down. Although some people want to know why their kids aren't sitting. That's another story. But they don't tape their kids down. And that's no joke. Okay, anyway, but when you're running an establishment in a restaurant, and, and being as the nature of some of these topics, I mean, I could see you not want to be falsely accused. But dude, you work in a restaurant. You own a restaurant for 10 years. You don't know that. And that's your goddaughter. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, you must think we're all born yesterday. Anyway, 
So back to the point. I don't know any cops or detectives. You know, even police officers have to Mirandaize their um, suspects. I don't know. I mean, so there's a question here about the the images of the little girl. And I'm going to hear, since I went on and on, I better make sure I put that image up, that you put on your Instagram account. You did this, not me. And then make the assumption or inference that everybody's accusing you of something. Yeah, I would say that if I was putting an image like that on Instagram saying we're having a good time and your niece did that. So more scapegoats, more reasons to point the fingers at everybody else. I mean, to be honest with you, right now you're guilty of a lot of fire safety issues and all kinds of other things. But the problem is, and I think it's a question that needs to be asked, is since everybody seems to be protecting one another, we need to know who's protecting the little girl here. Okay, because so far we've heard of stories that the D.C. Metro Police investigated and stated that, but then it turned around that somebody filed a Freedom of Information Act uh, to find out if it was investigated. Because even in an investigation, you'd find out something would be, there would be some reasonable conclusion, but you just passed it off as fake news. So, I mean, but pictures don't lie. Pictures actually tell a thousand words. And uh, stunningly enough, there's a lot of information there. Actually, there's a lot of information. It's loaded with questions. I'm just want to throw that out at you. So this is part one. We're going to close it up here for this recess for part two. Okay, welcome back to the Court of Public Opinion for the wrap-up. After listening to my, what, very quick explanation, it's a lot easier to come up with a rational explanation for all this. It's that simple. I don't have to stumble over my words. I don't have to trip over things. I don't even have to question this. The average person who goes in a restaurant usually gets seated. And if they're going to a children's party, they're probably not thinking about taping their kids down. They don't even think it's even, they don't even say that jokingly. Uh, because of the serious nature of the things. But obviously, when you're defending yourself, you, you're, you're taking a position that, you know, you're more upright than the next guy, and you're just going to squash all these thousands of people. You don't know anything about their job, their background, or career. So you don't, and much less anybody knows my background and career. Um, and, and, and I'm not sitting here that, that any of us are anything but that. Uh, I'm an average person outside of a lot of things. I mean, I have a family that is related to law enforcement. That doesn't make me an expert, but it doesn't take an expert to figure out that when you go to a restaurant and kids are taped down and there's laws that you have to obey in restaurants, just as like you have to obey traffic laws. And the, uh, uh, even a common traffic law, law violation gets more attention than what the James Elephantis issue with Comet P Ping Pong Pizza has gotten. I mean, more people get pulled over throughout the United States during the holidays for a lot less reasons, and they get citations after citation and court dates and court dates. I'd like to ask any average magistrate. I mean, other. I mean, that's part of traffic laws, of course, you know. But when we're talking about child trafficking laws, what about those laws? See, everybody's focused on all these other things, but obviously that does come up from time to time. When you think in terms that the Washington, D.C. commissioner is the one that stated that there's some questionable things going on there, like abusing children, and then another videotape of kids screaming at your restaurant. There are a lot of questions to be asked. So if you think that people just make up these allegations without some background, I mean, then that would be totally foolish. And then we're all a bunch of idiots, and we should all just shut up, and they should just censor all our stuff on YouTube, and they should just censor all of us because we don't know what we're talking about. But evidence here of these images, this little girl being taped down, opens up a whole new door of problems here. 
Because first of all, I don't see how a restaurant wouldn't investigate that or the police would question what's going on. So there's a lot to be asked here in the coming days. We hope that we've addressed it or concerns regarding this little girl, your goddaughter, who we would personally like to know if she's safe. Thank you for listening to the Court of Public Opinion.